Okay, so hi. Another day, another bacteriology video. And today I'm going to do the bacterium that causes Legionnaire's disease. And this is a disease that I'd never heard of before medical school. Um, I don't think it's a very common disease, uh, but we're going to do it anyway. And um, so, uh, Legionnaire's disease. Are we in focus? Yep. Legionnaire's disease. Spelt with double N, Legionnaire's disease. And the bacterium that causes this is called Legionella pneumophila. Legionella, Legionella pneumophila. And then when you do this, you only have one N, which I find really confusing. Legionella pneumophila. Okay, so Legionella pneumophila. And it's gram negative gram-negative, and it's a rod. And I'll draw you a little picture of what it looks like. So it's a sort of rod, that sort of shape, and it has a flagellum not coming off from, like, the tip, like, um, like, well, yesterday we had cholera, which had it coming off the tip, but instead coming off the side. So it goes, sort of, it's got a flagellum, so there's our flagella. Um, flagellum, rather, flagellum is the singular, flagella is the plural. So this is our bacterium, so this is a picture of Legionella pneumophila. And Legionella pneumophila likes to grow in hot water. So if you've got a hot water tank, so I'll just draw a water tank that's got hot water so that we'll have some steam coming off. So this is a hot water tank. Water tank. And um, Legionella likes to grow in here. So you end up with lots of Legionella in this wa water tank. And if uh, this water tank might give off aerosols, so an aerosol is just like a small particle of water, uh, well, not a single water molecule, but a small droplet of water that is on the air. So when you have one of those um, spray deodorants, which I absolutely hate, um, because they make me, f they, they have a very weird effect on me. They make me feel quite ill when someone sprays those. Um, but that's releasing a huge number of little liquid droplets, and um, those are called aerosols. So it's just basically a tiny little droplet of water that's in the air. And if this gives off these aerosols, then there might be, within this droplet, there might be some, uh, so this is an aerosol, aerosol, uh, there might be some Legionella pneumophila. And then we have our human over here, who is foolish enough to breathe in this uh, aerosol which has uh, Legionella pneumophila in. So, you know, <laughs> just to label a point, it goes in through the nostrils, usually, um, through the nasal cavity, into the nasopharynx, into the oropharynx, into the laryngopharynx, into the, through the, um, what's that, well, the hole into the trachea, I don't know what that's called, the hole that's blocked by the epiglottis, I don't know whether it's called, hmm, I would just call it the epiglottis, but I think the epiglottis is the uh, flap that goes over that hole. Anyway, so, um, it goes into the trachea, usually it'll go down the right bronchus, um, because the right bronchus's angle is a bit more favourable for things going down it, and it'll then go into the right lung, uh, into, but it could go into the left lung as well. Um, so into bronchioles, uh, and then finally into an alveolus. So you end up with this bacterium within your alveolus. So let's draw histologically what an alveolus looks like. So this is an alveolus septum, another alveolus septum here, and you have very thin cells lining the alveolus, and those are called um, type 1 pneumocytes. Type 1 pneumocytes. And then within this sort of, in the, within the alveolar septum, there runs the um, capillary network. So here we have a blood vessel. And obviously it wouldn't just be a dead end, but it will have a, this is where, um, going into the page, it will have another vein coming out. So we'll say this is a, we'll say this is a, um, um, a, um, the arterial end of the capillary. So this is a capillary, a pulmonary capillary, and it will have endothelial cells around it like that. And obviously the new type 1 pneumocytes will go on. And I haven't drawn any type 2 pneumocytes in, but those are a bit bigger. They'll be a bit more cuboidal like this. And they're the ones that secrete surfactant. Okay, so the 
peep there is also um, what's known as an alveolar macrophage. So a macrophage is a big, big cell. So here we are, and here's its nucleus at the centre. And all these cells, of course, should have nuclei as well. Um, but this is our macrophage here. This is called an alveolar macrophage. Alveolar macrophage. So that's a. It's slash. Um, it's sometimes also known as a dust cell. Dust cell. But alveolar macrophage. You know, it says it labels it quite nicely. I like alveolar macrophage. Um, and basically, uh, this bacterium is going to come into the. Um, into the alveolus and it's going to get phagocytosed by this macrophage. So if we draw that out, here's this macrophage and now inside the macrophage it has a phagosome and the phagosome has our the Geneva bacterium within it. Oh no, off the page, there we go. Um, so here is our um, macrophage, our nucleus here, our phagosome with the, um, the Geneva um, bacterium within there. And then we have some lysosomes here, which we're going to want to bring in towards the phagosome, and we want the lysosomes to fuse with the phagosome so that uh, they release the lysozymes, which are going to break down this bacterium um, into the phagosome. And basically, Legionella releases something that prevents uh, prevents the fusion of these lysosomes with the phagosome, and that's how. So it prevents phagolysosomal fusion and therefore it can quite happily live in that phagosome and it basically does that it lives within the macrophage the alveolar the macrophage and it just divides and so you end up with loads and loads of legionella pneumophila sitting within this uh, within this phagosome and the problem is uh, the, well, to be honest, the bacterium isn't that dangerous in itself. It, it's sitting in there. It, well, okay, it's not very nice, but it's not going to cause too much damage. The problem is that the macrophages do not like having this horrible bug sitting within them. So what they do is they um, they obviously de this is obviously producing all sorts of pathogen-associated molecular patterns. Uh, so molecules that are going to aggravate this macrophage and activate it and bind to pattern recognition receptors, and which will activate the nucleus. And the nucleus will cause the will express tumor necrosis factor alpha. So the ma the problem. So basically, this is where all the pathology comes from. That the alveolar the macrophages start releasing tumor necrosis factor alpha, and tumor necrosis factor alpha goes and acts on these endothelial cells here, and it causes them to contract. So it makes them smaller, so that fluid from the blood can come into the alveolar space. It's called an inflammatory exudate, and one of the key players that comes out is a protein called fibrinogen. So, um, fibrinogen, fibrinogen, which is then converted into fibrin monomers, 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 which is then converted into uh, fibrin strands. You join lots of fibrin monomers together and you make fibrin strands. So the overall uh, result of this is that you get these huge strands of fibrin all over your alveolus, and you get this happening in loads of alveoli. You also, t the other effect of TNF-alpha, and it has loads of effects, but the basic two effects that you need to know are that it causes this formation of this inflammatory exudate, so a huge amount of fluid and fibrin is going to be deposited within the lungs, and also that it causes these endothelial cells to become sticky so that polymorphonuclear uh, leukocytes, more commonly known now as neutrophils, which kind of look like this, they have a tri... they have... well, they have... generally they have free-lobed nuclei, but they can have even more than that. You can see them with up to six or more nu uh, lobes to their nuclei, which is why they're called polymorphonuclear leukocytes, PMNLs. Um, basically those stick to the endothelial cell. They, these are in the blood, they're a type of white blood cell. 
and they stick to the endothelium because the endothelium starts putting all sorts of cell adhesion molecules, selectins and ICAM-1 on its surface and this has the complementary receptors to those cell adhesion molecules. So it binds and then it comes, it can't, you see the endothelial cells don't contract enough to start letting all cells leave the blood, it only lets sort of, you know, fluid leave. Uh, so these have to get out another way. So they bind here and they diapodes across, if that's a word, across the endothelium, which means that they sort of slide between the gaps, uh, between the cells, and they end up in the alveolar space as well. So you have fibrin everywhere, you have neutrophils everywhere, and this is an acute inflammatory response within your alvey only. An acute inflammatory response within your alveoli is what is known as pneumonia. So this is Legionella pneumonia, or Legionnaire's disease. Now this is probably obviously going to co um, compromise gas exchange, and if it compromises gas exchange enough it may be well be fatal. Uh, so it's a serious disease, but it is a rare disease. So that's my bacteriology video for today, that's the pathogenesis of Legionella pneumonia. Thank you for watching. Uh, tomorrow I don't know what I'm going to do, potentially tuberculosis if I feel up to it.